So I've missed, a, uh, I think, two important details in this like, rather long series now about HTML, CSS, and DOM manipulation in P5 that I would like to kind of fill in some gaps. And so here is a scenario that I think will fill in one particular important gap uh, that I want to first talk about, which is uh, I, we have looked at how a class is a way of selecting a group of DOM elements. But what if those DOM elements aren't things that are written into the HTML file? Here is an example where I have used a for loop to make 100 paragraphs with the word apples in them and 100 paragraphs with the word blueberries in them. <laughs> now, we saw in a previous video how I could assign an event to all those paragraphs, but what if I wanted to style all those paragraphs? Well, certainly I could use p.style and add things to that, and this will dynamically encode style all the elements. But what if I had previously spent a lot of time working out very elaborate, now here I haven't done that because I just have one piece of style information, but you have a, a CSS file that you got from a friend or you just spent a lot of time preparing a lot of style information in CSS. What if when you create those elements, you want to assign all of them this particular style that's already written into your style uh, uh, CSS, your, your style information in the HTML file? Well, it turns out that in the same way that I could create a paragraph that is <laughs> that has a particular class associated with it. This is how I would do that in HTML. I could also do that when I make the element in JavaScript. So what I can do here is I can say this particular paragraph that I've made that I've given a random position in the window, I can also say make it a member of the class Apple and make the, all of these a member of the class Blueberry. So now when we look at this, you can see all of the Apple paragraphs are styled with a red background and all of the Blueberry paragraphs are styled with a blue background. Now this is perhaps the ugliest web page anyone has ever made. And you, the watcher of this video, will have a beautiful design sense and all sorts of interesting ideas. But so you can see, you can push, I would, I, I would try to do this. See if you can now create an artificially create a scenario for yourself where you want to make all of the CSS, all the styling here in the CSS, and you want to um, and you want to uh, uh, then generate the elements in JavaScript and assign them a class. You could also, by the way, switch classes midstream. Oh, this is exciting. Let's try this. So, what if I did something like, um, and I'm going to actually make this create. A, I'm going to show you another thing. This is. We haven't really looked at the create a tag, but the create a tag is a way of creating an anchor tag. Now, normally you might put something like, if I do this, right, I'm making a whole lot of elements with the word blueberries in them that are links, anchor links to uh, google.com. So if I do this, you can see now anytime I click on one of these blueberries, I've got the Google website because I'm clicking on the web. I'm clicking on the term and it goes to Google. A trick that you can use is using the pound symbol, meaning don't actually go anywhere. <laughs> Instead, I'm going to handle that in JavaScript. Boy, I've really gone off the deep end here, but this I think is kind of an interesting scenario. Now, what if I say mouse pressed uh, change, you know, become Apple. So now I'm going to make a function called become apple and I say this dot class apple. So what I'm saying is all of these DOM elements were created to be blueberries. But if I press on them, they become apples. And remember the magic of the keyword this. This is something that P5 does for you if you pass a callback as, if you pass a function as a callback to a DOM element and you're doing that the same callback to many DOM elements, the this keyword will know which DOM element actually triggered that event. So this particular DOM element should become a member of the class Apple. Let's fix, let's do a couple things to this. First of all, let's say, uh, I want to say font size. Uh, actually, all of, let's say all the paragraphs should have, uh, just so we can see it a little better, font size of 24 point and a, uh, 
um, uh, color of white. So you've got these red um, backgrounds. So now if we run this, uh, did I not? Oh, th are those not paragraphs? Oh, you know what? Eh, I don't know why that didn't work. <laughs> Let me just put it in here. Oh, because class, my, I don't know. I'm, somebody will correct me. I shouldn't, uh, live coding while I'm making these videos is very dangerous. Uh, okay, so you can see, and let's make less of them. Uh, let's just make 10 of each of them. Now remember all of the blueberries now. Any blueberry, when I click on it, when I click on the blueberry, the become apple function will be triggered. We'll just change it to be of the member class. <laughs> Didn't work. Do I have an error? <laughs> P create class blueberry mouse press become apple this dot class apple. Oh, I have like a failure again. This is so sad. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna just add some stuff here. Let's make sure. Let's fix this live. Here's another one of my failed videos. So how do you debug this sort of problem? This makes sense, right? Mouse pressed become Apple, trigger this code, change its class to Apple. I should see it visually look different on the page. So let's at least make sure this code is happening. Console log, this is happening. And by the way, instead of console log, I could just say print line. So let's, do, let's run this again, click on blueberries. So that is happening. Now, what is, now this.class Apple, should change its styling information. I wonder if it's actually just adding the class Apple, not, um, not changing it. I wonder if um, I have it. So one thing that I've, so I've realized, <laughs> I think that I have a conceptual problem here, which is that DOM elements can be members of different classes. So let's, let's discover if this is true by saying also like, um, uh, an apple, I'm going to give it, uh, I'm going to give an apple uh, a, a certain amount of padding. So you can see all the apples have padding, but the blueberries do not. Look, the blueberry got the pad. It, ch it did change to an apple, but it's still blue. Why did it change? It's because, ah, da, 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 da. I'm off the deep end in this video into the, into the nether region of whatever. But Eight DOM elements can actually be members of multiple classes. So when I said class apple, I didn't say remove the class blueberry and become an apple. I simply said also become a member of the group apple. Now, blueberry says to be blue. Apple says to be red. Blueberry says to have no padding. Apple says to have a lot of padding. Well, if this object is both a blueberry and an apple, it was a blueberry first. So it's going to be blue forever and ever. But blueberries don't have any padding. So since it doesn't have any padding, it will be an apple when it comes to padding. And you can see that that's now what's happening. Now, there probably is I, you know, a P5 function called, uh, whoops. I'm, maybe there's a P5 function called remove class. <laughs> and this would now say, ah, it worked. So I was going to look, I was going to get that wrong and then look in the reference for this function. But if I wanted to only be an apple, I need to first remove the class blueberry. You know, I went off on a tangent and I had some problems and I had to debug it and then I had to think about why it might be wrong and it all magically has worked in the end, which is great. But what, let's, let's, let's uh, meditate for a second and circle back to why we're here. The point of what I was trying to show you was a missing piece is that Classes and IDs are things that you often want to build into the HTML page so you can access elements from JavaScript. But now we're seeing that the inverse is also true. Classes and IDs are things that might exist in the HTML page, part of your CSS, and you sometimes want to assign those in JavaScript. And what's kind of exciting about those is you can assign them and you can take them away. So um, this is kind of a useful thing. I could also do something like, um, oh, oh, OK, so that's, that's item number one. Now there is another aspect of this. Another aspect of this is that, um, oh, that I missed. In, and you know what, actually, uh, no, that, that's fine. I'm going to, uh, uh, no, I, that's good. So that's good for this video. <laughs> uh, here's, here's my suggestion to you for an exercise. I'm going to make this into two videos. I think always like second, uh, another video is better than just keep going. So here's my exercise for you. Um, do something similar. Create for yourself a whole lot of DOM elements 
or may, actually, you know what? Here's an exercise for you. Do it differently than what I did here. Make a bunch of DOM elements, like five of them, six of them, in your HTML file. Give them all classes and assign them uh, styling information based on those classes in the CSS. Now, in your JavaScript, select them. Use select all by class and then build in some event that changes their class so you can dynamically style them adding and removing classes as well. So that, that's kind of an exercise that I think you could try. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you one more missing piece, which is how you can use parent and child with a P5 variable, not just with an ID and what that might allow you to do.